Here's a piece of footage of a person in a very dark office in shadows and he emerges from shadows as time goes by. This underlit scene is an example of something where auto levels has a lot of information to work with to stretch out the red, green, and blue channels. Let's go ahead and select this clip. And indeed, first we'll apply color correction, levels, and look at the histogram. Almost nothing is going on above the midtones. If I look through the individual red channels, green, and blue, you'll see different distributions. Blue has the most information going on. Red has the least information going on. Okay, let's apply auto levels again. Effect, color correction, auto levels. Drag it above levels so I can see what's going on in the histogram. And you can see that it's really trying to stretch out the information. Red has been stretched considerably. Green goes almost all the way to the highlights and blue indeed reaches the full dynamic range of darkest to lightest values. And you'll see the scene has been brightened considerably. This is before and after, really pulls things out of the shadows. And as the man moves forward, you'll see that Auto Levels is working on every frame, attempting to maximize the red, green, and blue channels individually. However, we've got a problem here. You notice that there's quite a color shift going on. Without auto levels, this is a very blue or violet blue scene. With auto levels, we almost have a green cast on this back wall. And as we go through the footage, you'll see a lot of flickering going on as different objects come out of the shadows and come into the shot. And as the man moves forward, we really change the color balance on this back wall from being greenish to back to our violet purple. Auto levels will induce the most noticeable color shifts in your image out of any of the auto effects. And for that reason, it's the one I use the least. It's too drastic. For a shot like this, instead I would use auto contrast. Effect, color correction, auto contrast. Auto contrast does not treat the red, green, or blue channels separately. Instead, it's looking at the overall luminance in the image, RGB combined, and that's what it's stretching. Off and on. Now you'll see that even in my darkest parts of the scene, it's been brightened up considerably, but there's no color shift. It's still blue with a bit of a violet tinge. And as the man moves forward, you'll see that we're still maximizing levels, but there's no color shift before, after. I'll ramp preview, and you'll notice this is a scene where we do have some flickering going on as auto contrast is trying to calculate every frame what is changing, trying to maximize the levels. Particularly in this scene, as he starts to emerge from the shadows, that back wall really changes. And here it is playing in real time. When I see that much flickering going on, this is a perfect example of when I need to turn on temporal smoothing. In this case, let's try a relatively modest value of such as one or even two seconds. I'll go ahead and calculate the RAM preview ahead of time for you here. We'll look at the playback. And we'll see there's not quite as much flickering going on. There's still some, which means I need to increase temporal smoothing even more. But in this case, we are now seeing a nicely brightened scene that still has the same colors as in the original scene and still frankly has a good number of shadows. It hasn't raised the black value of the shadows it's just raised the white points to be more maximized throughout the shot. If this shot was overlit, auto contrast would darken the blacks to again maximize the contrast. And to remind you again of the differences, here is what auto contrast does this shot. Here's what auto levels does. Big yellow greenish shift, not as useful for this shot as auto contrast is. So to review, when you have seen it's already pretty evenly lit and you just need to remove a color cast, Auto color is your best choice for that. When you have a scene that has contrast issues, either it's too bright and you're missing shadows, or it's too dark and you're missing highlights, auto contrast is a good choice for that sort of shot. Auto levels has a more limited use. If you have a scene that is underlit and also has a color cast, auto levels may be the ticket to both brighten it and remove that cast, but frankly, I prefer auto contrast or auto color for most of these jobs.